Hey everybody, week 48 of the No Code News. Not a ton of news. News about NAN, about Make, about Xanos or Xano. Templates with Softer, another API goes away from OpenAI. In other news like that, again, not a busy week, but hey, let's see what's going on. All right, so week 48, we start off with some N8N news, version 2.0 announced. It looks interesting. They're at one something, 0.9 or something, I forget. And it's just, it's nice. They might have some, when it's released, I'll test it out and add some more news about it. But it's good to see. I have some other 2.0 news that then makes this look, you'll see in a moment. Good news, but in, it's going to be, it, it'll be interesting in a moment when you see what's coming up. Make.com AI agents for sale. This is just a good example with Make.com of something customers ask me for quite a bit. And they they want to take phone calls and incoming calls and turn them into something that can be answered by AI because a lot of the questions are repeat. And again, the fear is like, hey, then these people lose their jobs. Some of these jobs either go away and get replaced and the person could do something else that's more maybe in-depth or skilled for that particular role or area. Or yeah, sometimes jobs just go away. That's a bummer. But in this case, it is a demand that I get a lot of. And if Make can really work with this other tool that they talk about, which is Meet Geek, then that's an interesting combination and a good example of no-code combinations to then solve a problem. And the particular person who asked me about this is just a business owner. If I could say, them, listen, I'll hook these two things up for you and you can support it or you can have me support it or you can add to it. It's just another win for how I like to do things where I give the business owner the power to keep doing it or hire me if they want to keep doing it. So yeah, Meet Geek and Make.com making a support call AI system. Now, the next bit of news is just a softer template, so it's cool. Not the biggest news in the world. Like I said, it's a, it seems like a slow week. Could be the holidays. Just another template out there you can grab and use. Health check dashboard. Nice charts and graphs. Any of this stuff can just give you ideas on what you can build too, so it's cool it's there. But just the fact that you can just grab a template and go is pretty awesome. Another thing that came across my radar is Microsoft Foundry. I don't have much to show for this. Actually, I thought I had a news thing on it, but I don't. But basically, Microsoft Foundry is a no-code platform that you can use at the UI level or the code level to build AI and other automations. It's tricky, though, because they had this other one from earlier, and it just seems like sometimes just things don't get any more funding or attention from them. So it's never clear where to invest with them. So yeah, it's there, Microsoft Foundry. Another item that came up in the news, maybe even last week, was the Manus browser. And I was just using this a moment ago, and uh, it takes over your browser, puts it in the background tab so you can keep working. But it, customers I work with need this to go do a task. And if it can go do it, if it can go gather that data, get that reporting for them in a way that is, is consistent and doable, that's great. It could be a one-off task. I'm not sure why they would use it over just Manus itself, but I guess maybe now that I think about it, it's like, hey, go to LinkedIn and grab me information about so-and-so. Manus can't do that on its own because of sessions. So yeah, this is a great possibility here. Again, enabling that user at that desktop moment to say, go do something. So it's bringing tools to the user at the desktop moment to say, go do something. And then if they decide this is something they want to keep doing, Manus with MCPs, Manus with scheduled tasks, just bring it all together with very little need from someone in the back end to put it together. So it's nice. So it's worth looking at. I think it's some cool things how when it takes over the browser, you have the tabs and it shows you it's being used by Mana. So that was neat. All right, 2.0 news that I was trying to mention before in not totally just take away the 2.0 N8N news, but this, I feel like I'm missing the boat here. Xano 2.0, even at the pricing that it has, I don't know, like, why am I using N8N? I sometimes wonder when you have a Xano 2.0 that I could build a static website in because of the new features. I could open up VS Code if I wanted to have Claude do something. But I can also drag and drop in their interface, use their database. So it's worth watching the video they have down here. It's 40 minutes, but to get a sense of what's possible, it's really neat. So I would say at 2.0, in N8N at 2.0, I don't know how to compare the two. When I hit Xanos, 
I'm going to see how it integrates with other services like Google Drive. Maybe that's the difference. And when you look at these as back-end solutions, maybe Xano does win. But when you look at these as solutions that ha- have to integrate with all these different services, maybe N8N wins. I- I'm going to maybe compare the two in another video. So this is OpenAI ending API access to ChatGPT 4.0 latest in February. And this leads into another training video and series I have where I just talk about running your own local LLMs, running your own hosted LLMs, or if you need more scale or whatever, do something in Bedrock where you can keep running that LLM as long as you need to. If that LLM is doing what you need today, then in five years, it's still going to be doing it. So you don't have to keep changing just because they're changing. Interesting news. And just a reminder that maybe we stop thinking about, maybe we stop using them out of the gate and start using our own models. The anti-gravity uh, Google, anti-gravity IDE, there, it's had a week or maybe two to really get some use. This one's an interesting one where he does a video on it and just talks about it. It's a good video. It's worth watching. And I guess it's not as paradigm or game changing as I hoped. Watch the video. Get a sense of what you think. I just was hoping, and it's getting closer, but I was just hoping to get to this place where we stop thinking about code is that one IDE you have open and you're working on that one folder with that one bit of code. So a good video on Google's new anti-gravity kind of math, I think is what the person said, or maybe I said it. But yeah, worth watching that video. Lastly, like I said, not a lot. I wasn't too, I had to really do some digging here. The GitHub trending video is always worth watching. And this one here I share... Some good information, if you go watch and go look at the notes, you'll see the transcripts. And in there, he'll have chapter links to local LLM news and other stuff going on that are GitHub trending. This whole, anything GitHub trending is really fun to watch, in my opinion, because you start to see what people are thinking and doing out there. So overall, not a ton of news. Leave some comments, subscribe. Join to get on the track for 2026 so you can learn how to build in these modern ways and how to have more on-prem services so you can do everything local in your own office, on your own machines, in your own home. But join to do that. That's going to be paid. I'm working on those videos and it just takes time to really get them right and then I'll start releasing those. But leave comments below and all right, thanks for listening.